Our first honoree will be presented with the Henry Crown Leadership Award. This year, we're honoring a woman who has been a font of inspiration to all Americans, regardless of their political affiliation. And now, let me ask that Bill Mayer, Francis Hoffman, and Mickey Edwards, as well as our special honoree, come to the stage. The recipient of our first award is fortunate to have not one, but three official presenters. My friend Bill Mayer preceded me as chairman of the board of the Aspen Institute and now serves as the chairman of the board of overseers of the Henry Crown Fellowship Program. Francis Hoffman is trustee of the Henry and Gladys Crown Charitable Trust Fund. Together, they shall present the Henry Crown Leadership Award. But before they do, Mickey Edwards will share with us his own personal thoughts about our first honoree. Uh, Mickey is my friend and served eight terms as a Republican U.S. Congressman representing his district in the state of Oklahoma. After playing an important leadership role in the United States House of Representatives, Mickey joined the faculties at several of our nation's finest universities, including Harvard, Princeton, George Washington, and Georgetown. Since 2005, Mickey has directed the Aspen Institute Rodell Fellowships in public leaderships, an important initiative conceived by a previous recipient of this August Award, Aspen Institute, Bill, Aspen Institute trustee, Bill Budinger. And now, let me introduce Mickey Edwards. Mickey. Thank you, Bob. This is a very, very special, meaningful, important moment for me. Uh, eight years ago, Walter Isaacson called me, and he said that one of the trustees of the Aspen Institute, Bill Budinger, observing how American politics had become largely dysfunctional because of the inability of people across party lines to work with each other, that decided that we should take a program modeled after the Henry Crown program for elected public officials. And Walter asked me if I would come to Washington, talk to Bill, uh, and see if I would put this program together, which I did. And the first thing we had to do was figure out what we're looking for. What are we trying to create? And what kind of person do we need to help bring about the changes that we had in mind? Uh, so working with uh, Bill Mayer, who played a very large role, Walter uh, and Peter Ryling, uh, Bill Budinger came up with some ideas and then I, I took them and I ran with them to try to figure out how do you try to change American politics. And out of that came what is currently uh, the Rodell Public Reader Leadership Program, which has 150 elected officials from around the country as, as a part of it. And one of the things we said was we are going to look only for the very best of the best a completely bipartisan program that finds people who are committed to improving the quality of public life, who are working together regardless of party labels, but who are going to make American politics what we, the people, deserve. Uh, and uh, I have, I should say here, that we have two other Rodell Fellows who have come here uh, tonight to help honor Gabby. Uh, one is, uh, he, at the time, he was the uh, majority leader in the Minnesota House of Representatives, Congressman Eric Paulson, who is here with us. Um, Eric was in the very first class of Rodell Fellows, along with Gabby, and in our newest class, uh, Jessica Lappin, who is a member of the New York City Council, uh, is also with us tonight. But when we, when we created this program, the very first Rodell Fellow, we were looking for people that had a reputation for thoughtfulness, intelligence, willingness to talk to people across the aisle, people who were inspiring, people who were motivating, people who could represent the best of American politics and political potential. And from every source, all around the country, I kept getting one name, one name. 
and it was an Arizona state legislator named Gabrielle Giffords, who I didn't know, but I checked her out as I do. I talked to everybody I could find, and you know, finally, you know, I, I arranged, I, I said, this is the one. This is the exemplar of what this program is going to be about. And I called Gabby, uh, and she became the very first Rodell Fellow. Uh, and then uh, we had our first seminar. Hey, we, we now invite, when we have the seminars, we invite spouses and all. How did that happen? It's because we had our first seminar, and Gabby called me and said, is it okay if I bring my boyfriend? Uh, and he, I know, he was this, he's some kind of an astronaut guy, you know, and so that's when I met Mark Kelly, who has not only been a champion for Gabby, but has himself been a great role model for the country. Um, so, so let me just say that when we look at what the Aspen Institute stands for, what the whole idea of value-based leadership is about, about people who are open, people who are transformative, people who can inspire and bring about the very best in all of us. You will find nobody, nobody who comes closer, whether in public or private life, than my friend, Gabby Giffords, who I say deserves this award more than anybody I possibly know because she is the Aspen Institute herself. So Gabby, I am so proud to be back with you again. Thank you, Mickey. <clears throat> Um, as, as Bob told you, I'm chair of the board of the Crown, Henry Crown Program Board of Overseers, and uh, was have lucky enough to have been there at the beginning. The Crown Program is now in its 16th year, and it is the original program of leadership at the Aspen Institute and has spawned a total now of 13 programs around the world, of course, including the Rodell Fellowship Program. And I think of these as a family of leadership programs, just like a family with children and a spouse, and a, or whether the spouse is a male or a female and the other, is that um, we're all related but very different. They all have their own identity, their own purpose, and their own view, and their own shape of what leadership means to that program <clears throat> and its role in the world, not just the United States. And so here we have uh, a great example of that, and I'm proud to, uh, to be part of this uh, presentation. I must say that having been a lowly first lieutenant flying in the Air Force in the early 60s in and out of Vietnam in a propeller-driven airplane, it's quite an honor to meet uh, Cap Captain Kelly and what he was able to do, because for all those of us who were way down here, he was pretty far up there. So I now, uh, Francis Hoffman has a, uh, a cold and asks me to read his remarks, which uh, will just take me a minute or two. You've heard about Cab uh, Gabby Giffords from Mickey Edwards and all about what this award is about from Bill Mayer. What you haven't heard is how all of this relates to Henry Crown. Henry cherished his leadership of General Dynamics because as a prime contractor to the government in both defense and aerospace, it gave him, once again, an opportunity to perform a service for his country. Gabby Giffords' committee assignments in the Congress were on the Armed Services and also the Science and Space and Technology Committees. The Henry and Gladys Crown Charitable Trust, in conjunction with the Aspen Institute, is extremely pleased to present to Gabby Giffords the 2012 Henry Crown Leadership Award and Honorarium. The Honorable Gabby Giffords, thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. You know, Gabby and I are really excited to be here this evening. Um, Gabby's connection to the Aspen Institute goes back uh, eight years. Early while we were dating, we had a plan, and I think it was to go on a trip to Vegas. And I was all excited about this trip. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Gabby says, I have a better idea. Let's go to Aspen. And I didn't know exactly why until I got there. And that was my first connection with this wonderful, wonderful organization. And I met a lot of people that I became very fond of from that one trip, including, including Mickey and Walt and others. And Gabby did too. We had a, we had a wonderful time there. Uh, today, uh, over the last couple of days, I was researching a little bit about Henry Crown and what the Henry Crown Leadership Award means. And I, don't, I imagine many of you don't realize that there are other connections beyond, well, beyond the obvious ones between Henry Crown and Gabby Giffords. And one of them that I learned today is that they are both, well, their name didn't start out as Crown or Giffords. Henry Crown was the son of Lithuanian Jews as Gabby was the granddaughter of Lithuanian Jews, and they used to have different names. And Henry, Henry Crown's name was, at one time, was Krinsky. And his dad changed their name to Crown. And Gabby was the granddaughter of a man named Akiba Hornstein. And if Akiba Hornstein didn't change his name to, well, at first to Giff Hornstein and then to Giff Giffords, we'd be standing up here giving an award to Gabrielle Hornstein. <laughs> uh, but the other thing they share is a common uh, integrity, and I think also from the reading I've done, the power of the human spirit. You know, more than anybody else, you know, Gabby aspires me to see what one person can do when they're really put in a pretty horrible circumstance and how they can fight back. You know, as Gabby heads off to therapy uh, pretty much each and every morning, you know, one, one of the last things she says to me uh, after she gets into the car before she drives away is, Fight, fight, fight. Fight, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. You know, she reminds me, she reminds me each and every day to deny the acceptance of failure. Gabby will not give up. And I am positive that one day she's going to be back in some kind of, some form of pub public service. I don't know if that's going to be running for our office or maybe um, some, well, there's, maybe. <laughs> that running for office seems like hard work to me. Um, but she'll, she'll be back. She's getting, getting better, better every day. She's excited to be here and she's very excited to receive this award. So on behalf of my beautiful and lovely wife, Gabby, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.